through and make sure you get all the wiggly ones and anything with a, a hitch to it or whatever. And But I did find this comb um, that I use when the hair is wet. Um, here it is, this comb that I use when the hair is wet. And it's so thin in between the, the, the tines that the hair has to be wet in order to slide through. Mm. And it will catch the bad hairs. It won't go through the comb. Oh, really? Yeah. So it'll, it'll catch it. So this has been fantastic. So if I miss one on the sort process, I'll catch it when I'm combing the hair and just take it out. Okay. Now, the knot I use. I am going to tie off this hair. This is the frog end. That's, see it's whiter than the other end. Okay. okay. And this is the end. This is better hair. This is closer to the horse. It's toward the ground. You want to use as much of the whiter hair as possible. So you cut off as much of this part of the hair as, as you can. So when you're done sorting, Make sure that this end is e pretty even. And this hank is extra long, so I don't have to worry about that. And then you go under, lay the hair here. You go around, and then you go around to the left, like this. Okay, and then that locks it on there. If you don't cross over and you try to pull, it goes up, it comes off. Mm. So you go like this, and then you cross over. And then I go again. And then you can really pull on that. And if you pull too hard, you'll break the thread. This thread is pretty strong. Then you make a square knot. Now you see how this thread is like that. So I go over, and I pull this through. Right, and then that brings that makes half of the square knot, and then I go this way and pull it through oh, the other way. Okay. Yeah, you go the other way, and you and you allow the hair to turn and you pull the thread, real tight. And to test it, try moving that. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. Yeah, so that, and you can test your knot to see if it's tight enough. And it has to be that tight to hold the hair. Otherwise, the hair will slip. And in, in, in fact, if you take one hair, you can pull it out of that, which is why you use rosin. But I have a bad one. There we go. This one's not good. So you can pull it out of that very easily. Okay. So you still have to be careful with it until you get the knots done. Then I measure the length. I wonder if I've got enough hair in here. This feels like a violin amount. Not quite enough for viola. I need a little more when I'm doing the viola. When you're pulling the hair out of the package, you have to be careful not to grab too much. And that changes as you use the hair up. When you first get it, you can barely get just a few hairs out of it. Then it starts loosening. And then if you keep take, you can take a bunch of it. And then, But then if you keep doing that, you'll get all the hair coming out. So mm. you have to be aware. It's usually about 10 hairs at a time. There we go. So that's the difference. Of, oh, this is a little over 20 hairs between a heavy violin and a viola bowl. I'm just going to hold the hair there. I'm not going to make it a knot. So then you have your thread, and you know you're beyond and to the end of the bowl, and in here, beyond the tip, like that. That's plenty of hair. Okay? Okay. And then you just cut it off like that, and then this is the tip. Make sure you have enough thread to do a knot. And then again, you do your knot. You bring it up close to the end, 
because you want to make sure that you've got your thread. Another way of doing this is go like this and you flip the thread over. Oh, that's it, that's it, oh, that's it, that's wrong, and I do that. All right, so you do that, make it nice and tight. Trim it again. So this is at least um, a millimeter or more longer than the bottom of the mortise, okay? Because you're gonna put up the thread and then you gotta burn the end. This is about an eighth of an inch longer right here. Okay. You don't want to go too crazy with it, otherwise you just waste a lot of, of rosin. The alcohol for this lamp is in that can down there. It's denatured. And then, I, and then if you look at the rosin, you'll find cakes of rosin that are melted. I've got these that could be all melted together. And this is... Um, green rosin. I like hill rosin for this. This is a cake. I also use it for grinding up and putting on the hair. Once you use a rosin for melting um, on the thread, you can't use it to grind it up and put on the bows. Once it's melted, it changes um, its composition. I understand. So I'm melting this and then applying it to the hair. Okay. Like that. I'm going to make sure the thread is out of the way. Collect the thread. And you heat this up. And now I'm using the rosin, the clunk of rosin, to work it into the hair. And you heat it up and work it around. Because you want to have it well into the end of the knot here. And it's a little precise. You don't want it to go over the, you don't want it to come down here. You want it to stop at the thread. And then you heat it up once it's incorporated until it's all bubbly. The, ha the, the hair can start on flame. And now you wind it up. Now that, that was probably a little fast for you to try at first. So you want to get like three winds on there quickly, and then you can go slower, and, and maybe not that slow. But you get the thread on there neatly, and then you make your half of a knot. And I'm going to go over this way and half that way. And trim this off, not super close to the knot. It's enough there, right? so that that's not going to fall apart. Heat it up again and twirl it around on the rosin, on the lamp, so that the thread is covered with rosin now, okay? All right? Okay. So now it looks like that. Then you trim this. That, like that. And then you take the pliers, and I've got to get another pliers. I had pliers that were parallel jaws. I think I gave those to Stephanie. But these, these are okay. I've been using these for a while, but they are not quite parallel. So you cover the thread with the pliers. You're holding it gently. And then you put this in the flame, and the pliers keep the flame from burning the thread. And you watch. You watch and see, and it starts burning. And you watch the middle of the knot. Can you see the middle of the knot? Oh, it's still brown. It's not brought black and bubbly yet. You want that yeah. whole thing burnt. And you do this until the very middle of the knot is burnt. There, see? And once it's burnt, it almost just stops burning. And then you squeeze it, knock off the excess, dunk it in water. 
Okay. So then you get a knot that's tight, neat, flat, and just the right length. So that's, that is what I want you to practice while I'm gone is making knots. Okay. And then you, then you can take another hank or you, you if you goof up on a knot and this is wet, you have to dry the hair. Wet hair will not, the rosin will not stick to wet hair. It'll pop off and burn you. Okay. Okay. But we got plenty of hair. You can just take another hang. So now you hold this so that the it's flat. And you place the knot on the back of the mortise. And you put this bent file here right at the in intersection of the, right at the end of the knot. And you hold the hair so that it's all pulled even there. And you allow it to bend and it goes in. And then you push this down. And then here I'm pulling up and pushing down at the same time. And this is a very nice tight fit and you work it in so that the hair is, it's flat on the bottom and all the hair comes up like that. Did you get that? Yep. Okay. Um, another hold for this is to go like that. Okay. Okay. Then you take the plug and fitting plugs will be another video. Um, you put this in here and you make sure that the hair is distributed evenly across the front. Okay. And that it's pulled out. You don't have looseness in there and you hold it. And since the hair is wet, this plug will slide on there easily. Another reason why the hair goes with the hair wet. Then you get most of the way in and then you grab the hair and you pull up the same time you're pushing down. And that locks in, that locks in the hair. And to test it, you gently pull on it this way. And if it pops out, your plug doesn't fit right. Now this particular plug is one I did not fit. And it is not wanting to go down all the way. So pressing on this. There, I got it in. There. So then I can trim this. And if you use a knife for this, Make sure that the back of the knife is rounded, otherwise you'll slice your hair. And you gotta be careful, you don't cut this ivory or scratch it or anything like that. Okay? That's the head. Then, I've got this clamp here, and I've got this little piece of wood. Two functions for that. One, prevents the bow from flying out of the grip and landing on the floor. Two, it keeps the hair from getting caught in there. Trim that, and I use the this gray comb, I've been liking this a lot. Okay, so you put the, the comb in, put your fingers underneath it and comb. And I use this when it's dry. Then I use the other side of it. That sorts out the hair nicely. Then I curl the hair up. it in the water 
and this hank of hair doesn't react well to soaking for a long time. So I just wet it very quickly. I used to have hair that I had to soak for a little bit. It was a little more coarse. Comb it with that. Comb it with this one. You gotta go a little slower with this one. No, I got all good hair in that. get another one of these combs. Find out where they are. Buy a few. And you notice I'm taking it right yeah. from the very end up here. And you put the, the teeth in there, work it in. Like that. Hold your fingers here. And you have to figure out where on your fingers is a nice even place to put the hair. I used to put my fingers here on my knuckles, but my knuckles have gotten bigger, so it's not flat anymore. So I've had to change, so I'm using my, the end of my finger. And you'll have to discover that for yourself. So once you have the hair combed, and it'll make a noise, if you notice, it was like that, mm -hmm. see? If you go the right speed and the right pressure. And then I use up the excess thread, just because you can go through a lot of thread. And I'm flipping on one side, then the other side, then this side. See that? Mm -hmm. Did you get that? Uh, maybe one more okay. time. Start here. This. Then this, and then this, okay? Okay. And line the hair up over the stick, pull it a little bit, and then pull this thing tight, hold it. And then again, with a square knot, notice I'm holding it, okay? Okay. Now that is the finished ribbon. If you comb it incorrectly and release it, if you've got rubber bandy hair, which was miserable to work with, I would do that, release it, and then be a few hair that were tighter than everything else. It's like, what is that? And I just want to cut them out. Okay. So then you cut those off. You can use scissors for that too. I just use my knife for everything I use to that. Um, I think. Will has a pair of pliers or something, or scissors that he cuts it with, and it, it, it works good. And you take the frog. Do not let go of the frog whatsoever at all. It's either in your hand or on the stand. You do not put it on the, on the bow and let go of it. Okay. Never let go of the frog when it's in your hand, when you're putting it on the stick, you never take your hand off the frog when it's on the stick. Okay. Got that? Mm -hmm. Never. Okay. Six times. <laughs> never. Because if you do that, you boing the stick, the frog flies off and breaks. Okay. Little dent, crack, something. So you have your, you, you pick up the frog like this, you bring it around and you hold it there. You do not let go of the frog. Then you bring the hair down. Again, you have it under tension. And if you look at the head, see how much this is moving? Yeah. Get that picture of that. I'm pulling it this, this much. From that to here. That's pulling the hair that much. Okay. Then I come down here and I eyeball where the end of that mortise is on the frog where this is, okay? So again, you put the frog on the bow, you do not let go of it. Mark the end of it here, put it back in the holder. Then you take more thread and you, this is the marking knot. And again, it's a, the same square knot 
put that knot right where you had your finger and you eyeballed it. And you make that a tight knot too. So you've got two knots holding this hair even so that things aren't going to slip. Okay, and this knot doesn't have to be as tight as this one. If you need to adjust it, you can. Or just look at it. See, now this was, this when I pulled the hair tight, this wound up being a millimeter short. So I will take that into account when I make the knot. So then you take a look at this and you see how far does this go down? And that's how much space you want from here to the beginning of your knot is that and then you have that length of the knot to go so i'll start my knot since it's a millimeter short i will start my knot about here okay and if somebody wants it to be haired long you move it a couple of tenths up if they want it short you move it a couple of tenths down okay okay and it only takes a tenth or two to make a difference in the length it's a very precise measurement there all right so then you want to chop off enough so that you've got plenty to work with and this is slightly damp and rosin won't stick to wet hair so you squish it like this and you put it over the flame and you spritz it and as long as you keep your fingers moving and you keep the hair moving it won't burn and if the hair gets cinched a little bit that's okay but you keep your fingers moving and then you don't get burned. And it gets, it gets, it's hot. I don't think I've ever burned my hand doing this. And you can feel if it's dry or not, especially if it starts getting singed, it's dry. So you want enough thread. And then we had, again, you cross over. I'm gonna make it, okay, that, 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 and make it a little bit like that. Okay, so there's the beginning of our knot. And the nice thing about using rosin is that you can adjust the knot. If it's too short, you can heat up the thread, move it up a little bit, get it longer. It's just only a tenth or two, but you have to change it sometimes. If it's too long, you can add thread behind your knot. And you don't have to re-rosin it or anything. Just add a little thread, half a millimeter, millimeter maybe or something, mm. and you can shorten the hair if it's, it comes out too long. All right, so now you gotta be careful that you don't pull anything here because there's no rosin on here. And you can make your hair all uneven, and then you gotta start all over with all the combing and the knots and stuff. So. Here we put the rosin in it. Forms a little drip underneath the rosin. And you put it on. You heat it up and work it in. your thread organized and now I'm going to do this one fast up to speed so you know how that goes okay that's all bubbly and be careful that you don't drip rosin on the bow and you don't want to get it on your fingernails when it's bubbling, because it, that burns. So now I'm wiping off the excess rosin here. See that? Mm -hmm. And contouring it around so it gets all incorporated. And trim that. And then you cut this here and you cut this notice I have not burnt the knot yet 
and finished this. Mm -hmm. And it's still soft. And it's still susceptible to pulling the hair out. So then you very gently find the center of the hair. Bring it down. Find the center. Hold that like that. I'm going really slow. And then you take this up. Hold that right over the thread, line it up. This flattening of the of the knot keeps the knot from turning when you try to put it in the frog. And if you turn the knot, it'll get all twisted up and one side will be longer than the other. Squish. I forgot to hit it. Okay, there we go. Um, see how this flat is right with the band of the hair? The flat of the hair. Okay, yep. It orients the... And then, then I take it and go like this. Actually, it's, it's more like this. Do a palm. Touch it. Flip it around so that this is all even and the right side. Don't forget the furrow at this point. It's always a heartbreaker when you forget the furrow. Now this one, it's hard to tell which side is which. So you try it on the frog because these are like fingerprints. You see how this doesn't want to go on? Yeah. So this is the way it goes. This is this direction. And I am, I am, a, I'm pulling on the back of the, of the hank. I'm not allowing this hair to get bent or loose or anything. Cause that is the hair that has to stretch out a little bit. Okay, now that this plug, it could be a little longer. It does not have to be. It went in very nicely. Okay, so you slide it in this way, and that, and you make sure that it's down at the back all the way down at the back. And you don't let that pop up. So I'm holding the hair so that that stays put. And doesn't doesn't pop up on you. Because if it pops up on you and try to put the plug in there, it won't hold. It won't lock in properly. And these plugs are a little bit tight because I have a little bit more hair in there than it had before, I think. And this is not dug out in there. I like to scoop the under night under part of the knot of the uh, plug to allow room for the knot. And then this, you bevel this slightly here. And that is a trick that I learned from and, um, Herbie Carlson, who did bows at Lewis's. Okay, so that's back all the way and down. And if I needed to, I could trim just a little bit off of that plug. But it's much better to have it tight than loose. You don't want it loose that the hair will pull out every time. Now, observe. You pull it, 
And you notice how there's tight hair in the middle and loose on each side? Yes. That is what you want. You want it tight in the middle and loose on each side equally. If it looks like this, I'm going to get some here. If it looks like that, you do not have the plug in the frog properly. Okay. And it won't even out. You'll have one side loose and one side tight. Mm. It bend the bowl a little bit or it will just be uneven. Okay. Same thing if it's going the other way. You don't want that. You also don't want, like, if there was, um, let's see if I can do this. If it's if it's extremely like it, like that. Okay, that's not good. That means that your hair is uneven, and um, maybe you put it in the frog wrong where the caught a little part of the hank and, and, and it's caught underneath the plug. What you do then is you just take the plug out and try it again. Okay. And you can keep putting the hair in the frog over and over and over again until you get it right. And if you have hair that, if it winds up like this, then that usually means that the frog, the, 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 the knot is turned in the frog. Okay? Okay. If you have it like, like half of it tight and the other half not. That's why when I pull it uh, to test it, I go like this and see the action of the hair. Is that down the center and has it got, you know, hair on each side? Like that? Yeah. And then you put it in the, in the stick. You, put the, you place the frog in the stick. Do not let go of the frog. And you put in the th screw. And you bring it up to tightness, plain tightness, and the hair is wet, so it'll stretch. Okay, you spritz it and see, is it, a, is it an even job? And it should be even when you t pull it up, plain tightness. There's one long hair. I'm gonna take that out. And I don't flame the hair, some people will then if you've got a long hair, they'll put it over the flame and make it shorter oh. by using a flame. That was a standard way of doing rehairing. And um, I don't do that because that damages the hair. You know, if you, because the way you flame it is it, 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 it shrinks it up at some point and then the hairs don't last as long. So if you're careful, and you do a good enough job with the rehair, um, it comes out even without any flaming. And then I just I comb the hair and put all the if there's if there is any crossed ones, you put it into the frog while it's drying. So now you find you go like this down here. See, oh, and it's clear. Oops, I just got your eye. <laughs> so, and you can just check it like that. That's what Will was doing the other day. Yeah, I, I saw him. And there's a tangle here. That hair I took out. And you don't necessarily have to take out this hair. Because when you do the wedge, it will come out. But I don't like this one. This one's twisted around. And it also has a little kink in it. Oh, wait a minute. There's this one. Here's where having scissors works good.
See, that'll, that'll work out all right. That should be in the fog. And it's in the way you do the wedge. Whether you get things tangled or not. You don't want to, you don't want to pull a lot of hair out of there right at this point. Oh, sorry. Because the thing, the, the action of this is you've got hair. You want to have enough hair in the furrow. But the, the tip of the bow is smaller than the furrow. The width here is bigger than it is up here. So you're going to have a tendency for the hair to get crossed a little bit anyway. It, it, it's what's going to happen because it has to go from wider to smaller. Um, but you don't want things that are overlapping. You don't want you don't want the hair going around the other hair or crossing way over like that. Okay. Because then that, that's very difficult to wedge. And that's why after you wedge it, you check it. Because you, you don't want it, you don't want to lose a lot of hair either, so. And I have had things happen where someone does a re-hair and it's all crossed up and won't go, you know, even at this point, just do it over. You know, or maybe it's just, it's not into the frog properly. You take it out, you comb the hair, you hold the hair even. It might be a big mess when you're holding it. And then as you put it into the, the mortise, it straightens it out. Okay. okay. It could be something where you were holding the knot down and you put the plug in. Got okay. it. So that is re-hairing 101. Perfect. Thank <laughs> you.